We've now got our map displaying, but we don't have any houses to display on it. So it's time to move into this add house page so that we can start to get some data into our database and then eventually rendering on the map. So if I click on add house, um, first of all, it shows up because I'm logged in, but this page isn't really showing anything yet. But before we even get to the visual side of things, I wanted to limit access to this page server side so that it can't be sort of messed with on the browser that uh, kicks you out of this page if you're not authenticated. So let's start by going to this page in houses add and we're going to uncomment these first two. So what we're going to do is work on one of those uh, get server side props that in the auth page we stopped users from visiting when they are, are authenticated. In add, we're gonna work on the opposite, stop them from viewing it when they're not authenticated. So we're going to say export const get server side props, and the type of that is get server side props, which will be an async function receiving the request and the response. So in here, we're going to make a call to that load ID uh, token function that we created in a previous video that will return us possibly a UID, the user ID. So we're gonna await the response from that load ID token. And it wants us to send a next API request. So we'll send the request and just we have to convert it to the correct type signature. So now what we can do is check whether the UID has a value. So in this case, we do want a UID. So we're gonna say if there's not a UID, because in this one we did if there is a UID. So if there's not a user ID, that means they're not authenticated which means we wanna kick them over to the auth page. So we're gonna use the response and we're gonna set header, uh, the location header, we'll send them to the slash auth page. We'll set the status code of 302 for a redirect and we'll end that response. And we always have to return an object with props even though there aren't any. So this will run on the server. So we could test this if I were to go back to the home page, log out go to houses add, it's gonna kick me over to the auth page so that I have to authenticate prior to um, viewing this page. So now we can um, go back and it works fine. Every, everything's happy. So the next step is to basically import the layout and the house form that we're going to be building and convert this, we can just get rid of this. So we're gonna use the layout. The layout wants a main, and our main here will be the house form, just like this. So we're gonna get a big fat error on the screen because house form doesn't contain a component yet. So that's our next step, to go into components house form and start to, um, to create this. Now it looks a little intimidating. There's like a million imports here. Um, that's because this is sort of the biggest component in the entire website, but we're gonna work on it in a few different chunks. Our goal in this video is basically to just get things initialized, to get something rendering on the screen, to get, um, uh, we're using a package called React Hook Form to manage the form user input. So to get this initialized and working, and that all starts with um, creating the type values. So we're gonna say interface I form data. So this is the TypeScript, what we're actually gonna collect in this form. So we're gonna collect address as a string latitude as a number, longitude also as a number, the number of bedrooms, we're just gonna say it's a string. And the reason why is we're not gonna be doing any calculations and when the user, any, any form, no matter what type of input you're using, it always gives you the data as a string. So it was just easier to, to, to use this as a string even though it might not make sense. Lastly, we're gonna ask the uh, user to upload an image. Now, an image itself is a type of file, but when you're using um, an input of type file, it actually gives you, it is a file list, because inputs of type file can support multiple. So a file list is sort of like an array of files. And we're also gonna declare the interface for the props that our component will receive, even though right now it's not going to receive any. So with those two interfaces set up, it's time to actually create um, our house form component. So we're gonna say export default um, function house form. 
It's going to receive no props now, but uh, eventually it will later, especially when we go into editing um, a home. We're going to pass the existing home that needs to be edited into this house form. And then it's going to be a functional component like that. So why don't we just get this thing working so we can see uh, a page without a big fat error message. So we're going to return a form and in the form, we'll give it some class, some class names. So we'll say center this form, give it a max um, width of an extra large and give it some uh, vertical padding of four. Inside of here, we're going to give it an H1 that for now says add a new house. And we'll give this a class name as well. So this is going to have an extra large um, class on it. So if I were to go back, I get this form rendering. It says add a new house, uh, no error message anymore. And it's time to move on to initializing React hook form. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to keep track of just a, a Boolean state of whether the form's in a submitting state or not, so that I can disable the submit button if that's the case. So we're gonna say submitting and set submitting is equal to use state and we'll start this as false. So I'm getting an error because I need to import a few things. So I think for now, I'm just gonna import the first two. That will give me use effect. It will also give me the use form hook from react hook form. And as we need more later, we'll just go uncommenting them. So the next thing I'm going to set up is the form itself. And to do that, we use a function or hook called use form. And we need to, or we can tell it because we're using um, strict TypeScript, what type of data this form is going to collect. So this would be this interface up here, I form data. And now we can pass in some options. So the only option we're going to use is default values, which for now we're just gonna leave empty. Uh, when we're, because we're building a new home right now, we don't have any existing values, but when we're editing an existing house, um, that's when we're going to pass in some existing values from the house that we're editing. So this hook here gives us back a number of things. The first one is a function called register, and that's used to register new input fields. It gives us one called handle submit, which seems to handle submission. And then we're going to use a few later on called set value, um, give us access to the errors and another one called watch to watch for changes in a certain value. So normally you use register um, on the input field that you're registering and you would use it on the ref. Um, but in our case, we're using um, the first field we're going to add is a search to search the location. And that isn't going to be your standard input field. That's going to be using Google Places, and we're going to get to that in the next video. But because we're not registering it in a normal way, we're actually going to register them in a use effect hook. And because um, we have one dependency on this register um, function, we're going to pass that in as our dependency. So in here, we're just going to register three fields that aren't handled in your typical input fields. So that would be, we're registering the address field, and then we can set up some um, validations for it. So it's a required field. Please enter your address, save that. We're registering the latitude because that's going to come after the user searches in the Google Places search box. Um, and we'll have some validations for that. So this is required, yes, and it's gonna have a min value of minus 90 and a max value of 90. And then we're gonna register the longitude as well. So longitude, next object. So there's two objects here. First one with a name, second one with the validations that we're using. So this is required, also true. It's gonna have a min of minus 180 and a max of 180 to keep that into the valid latitude and longitude um, ranges. So when a form is submitted, you need to handle that submission and they give us a function called handle submit. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna say on submit, I want you to 
um, call handle submit. And handle submit wants to receive a function that we create of what to actually do with the submission. So we're going to create one called on submit that doesn't yet exist. So we're going to create that here, um, const on submit. It's going to be an arrow function that receives some data. Um, what data is it going to receive? All the form data. And because we've already created this TypeScript interface, iForm data, we can use that here. So this is what it's actually going to receive. And we can't really do anything yet because we haven't yet set up our backend with GraphQL and all of that. So we're just going to sort of do a couple things for now and we'll go building and expanding on this function later on. So we're going to set submitting to true because we're submitting this data here. And I'm going to call a function called handle create. So the creation of a house and pass it the data because this form will do two things. It will handle create and it will handle update. So I'm just sort of dividing them up now in separate functions to make our lives easier later on. So let's create this handle create function, handle create. It is going to be an async function that receives the same iForm data and then it does something with it. So we're going to have to implement this later on. Um, next thing we want to do is just start to fill out a little bit of detail in this form and then we're going to sort of call it a day on this video and we're going to move on to the next one where we go and implement the Google Places search. So what we're going to do here for now is just create a div with a bit of top margin and inside of this div we're going to have a label HTML4. It's going to be for a search field. We're going to give it a class name of block and inside of here we'll say search for your address. So sort of right here put a comment So search field, that's what we're going to be putting there. And then below this search field is where we're going to show any errors if there's any. So the way you show errors is we're going to check the errors object returned from use form hook. And we're going to check if there's an error on this field and see that because we've used TypeScript, it's even telling us what possible errors there's going to be. So if there's an error on address, we're just going to use a sh sort of a shortcut operator to say and then display this P. So we're going to say errors.address.message to display the errors, the message of the address error if it exists. So next video we're going to be filling in this search field. It doesn't seem like I have any TypeScript errors. Um, it's saying search for your house here. Let's just check the console to make sure there's nothing funky going on looks okay. Um, one other thing I thought I could show now is just, so I'm basically up to this point, I've been using VS code to tell me if I have any TypeScript errors by looking for the red squigglies under, underneath the, whatever, wherever there'd be an error. But if we just get out of the dev server now, so there's actually a command I can run yarn TSC. That's a TypeScript check. And it's basically going to run TypeScript in the command line and tell me if there's any errors. So if I made one, for example, hey, so this is an error. I get the squiggly because it's not assignable to um, state of Boolean. If I were to run TypeScript check here, it would notify me that, um, that I have this error and it would tell me what file it's in. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature that you might want to use if for whatever reason VS Code isn't uh, showing you the right error messages. Cool. So that's it for this video. The files we changed were the houses add page. And then we started to build out the component house form that we're going to be sort of expanding on in future, future in other videos. All right, let's move on.